Welcome to Toy Hill Studio. My name is Kendall Kessler and I'm going to do another Dallas skyline painting. This time I have a feeling it's really going to be a lot of off-camera work because I want to do something different. As I said before, these are all very experimental, all my skyline works. But I kind of want to do a night scene and I want to have some lights in the water. So that's probably not going to happen in one layer. I'm going to start off with a big brush and because of the way this paint spreads, it's not going to be that dark. So, I may have to, as I said, go into it for a number of layers. And I do want it to bleed and do some interesting things. So, we'll just see how fast I can go on this. I really like doing these, although I never never know what I'm going to do until I do it, as I've said before, because I don't want to do um, an actual skyline the way it looks. I want something very, very creative and very colorful, but I've got to, if I'm going to do a night scene, I'm going to have to kind of restrict myself here in the sky to get it dark enough. And I can always put a lot of layers if I can't get the effect I want. And I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> and I really do like to just kind of play with these and see what happens. It's um, what I really do love to do. And I make these YouTubes to show people what I do and also to get my work out into the world. I was real pleased that a number of prints of my Skyline, not my Skyline, my Blue Ridge paintings went out this week to a great patron. And that's what I mainly do. So I know I've mentioned before the Blue Ridge and surrounding area. And these were some really popular vistas and all of them have been sold. So the person, of course, had to get prints. And the prints are great. They really are fantastic. I have ordered some greeting cards to make sure the printing quality is good and wow really really excellent so even though it's not an original it still is just excellent quality and archival as can be um, main reason I work in oils this is an acrylic is because I love how archival they are they are really wonderful I taught at Radford University and I really like to explain the different mediums to people that don't know a whole lot about art in an Art and Preach class, and oil painting doesn't really change. I'm going to do the water too and then get the reflections in. It doesn't really change over time, and you don't have to have any glass over it. That's what I like. I don't know if I want to put these reflections now while it's wet or not. It doesn't change over time, uh, only sometimes the pinks kind of change, and I use really, really good paint. I don't, there's some paint that's really crummy, but I know the difference. So I use Top Notch, Utrecht, and Gamblin. I really like Gamblin better than Utrecht, but um, the Utrecht, uh, the Gamblin, it's really in blue for some reason. I just don't like, so I get that at Utrecht. But the Gamblin is really, really nice quality, really strong paint that I really uh, like to use a lot of. Okay, this is good that I'm getting this covered fairly quickly because I don't like these YouTubes to be longer than like 20 minutes at the most and a lot of them are 10, 15. Okay, since I've got that in there, I'm going to put a little bit more and I'm going to go ahead and even though I haven't got the buildings in, I'm going to start putting in some reflections so that they'll bleed real nicely. And since this is going to be a night scene, I'm going to use a lot of yellow. Oh, oh yeah, that's well. Like I said, I never know what I'm gonna, what's gonna happen until I do it. But that is a lot of what I wanted to get. Be really strong. Pull down look of a of a reflection. And yeah, it's gonna bleed and all. But that's that's essentially what I wanted to get. So kind of doing this backwards in a way. But then we'll see what happens. There's also going to be lights on the bridge, and I know that I'm not going to get that in one layer. 
because that's going to take some drying and all building up for them to really, really sparkle. I'll get a little fancier here with the color. And I don't, I'm not necessarily going to repeat this with the buildings at the top. This is a very fanciful abstract painting and I'm just going to let it go, do different things and just react to it as the different colors and what's happening, how they're interacting. I also do abstracts where there isn't any recognizable shape. We artists like to call that non-objective or non-figurative, but um, a lot of people just see that as abstract, so you know, that's fine. We tend to think of abstract as when artists on purpose change the shapes of things, like a lot of what Picasso did and other artists. And it's not because they couldn't draw. <laughs> Picasso was a fantastic draftsman when he was a kid. It's because of a certain effect they're trying to get. Okay. Yeah, I'm having fun with this. Just kind of fooling around with some reflections. And then, then I'll go back in. You know, here I really want to have some lights going into the water. That's probably going to be darker at the end. Don't know. I'm going to lose some of this nice dripping kind of reflective abstract quality if I keep going into it. But then I really want those areas to, to really sharpen out, to be very sharp like you see in a night scene. And you notice uh, I don't care that this is not pink down there. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to follow it or not, or just kind of like it, who knows. But I am using a bigger brush, so that, not a huge brush, but a pretty good sized brush, so I can cover this, it doesn't take too long. Certainly a rather sad time right now in our country and the world with this pandemic, and uh, just a, as upset as everyone else, and I do think that everyone should stay home and for goodness sake, if you do go out, use a mask, stay away from people. We've got to all be very careful now, because I'm doing that, I want to do more in the sky now. Got to be very careful. I know a lot of people don't really have a whole lot to do. And this is not to be bragging or anything, but boy, I don't know what that's like. I just always want more hours in the day. I think that's because I'm an artist. And I think most artists would probably say that. We're just always working away. And there's so much to do with promo to get our artwork out. It's just a very, very um, time-consuming job. And I always, at the end of the day, it's like, oh, darn. Still have so much to do. And I'm not anywhere near done. Okay, getting tired of all this blue stuff. I'm going to have to get fancy with some red. I do love red. Um, I know I've mentioned this before, but I don't know who was watching. Uh, one time in a competition, the famous artist Mae Stevens looked at my work, and when she met me, she said, Ah, the red-green painter. And that's so true. I really do have a thing about those two complementary colors. I like all colors, but um, red and green. So I tend to gravitate towards that a lot. And, I don't know, I'm kind of liking this not being very complicated. Usually with these paintings I get real, real complicated. And I'm kind of liking the more simple approach for this one. I do want it to have the effect of a night scene. And if I don't get that in this layer, then I will go over it again and build up the paint. Something I've mentioned before also that a lot of people don't realize is that most paintings are done in layers. Now, not always, but most paintings are done in layers. A lot of people think that people that paint outside, that it's, you know, they just cover the surface once and that's it. Sometimes, not always. Claude Monet, who was very famous for getting out there and trying to capture exactly what I saw before, what he saw before the light changed, would take them back and work on them. It's uh, still, a matter of it being a painting, always a painting, and not just, well, I shouldn't say not just, you can't really get what's out there, but it's not necessarily a reproduction of what's around there. And as I said, ad nauseum, you really can't get that anyway, because the light's always changing. And 
like Monet said, you're just going to get a naive impression. That's the best you're going to get. <laughs> and I think he's absolutely right. But you can get some great, great, what we call beautiful shadows of what's out there. And it's a very exciting experience. But almost always done in layers. Mine are done in many layers and usually impasto. Now this is not an impasto painting, but my paintings are usually impasto paintings where the surface of the paint comes up a little bit, which to me is just makes for a wonderful expression. And the colors, the whole thing just comes out at you like it's almost turning into a piece of sculpture. And I, I just really like working that way. But for these skylines, I like doing this because uh, the oil paintings, definitely, I'm not doing that in one layer. No way. They're always done in a series of layers. I'm starting to think this is kind of cool. Usually I was like, uh, no, but um, I kind of like it. Now I really want to do more with the water and the reflections, and that'll probably be in the next layer. I don't want it dripping that much, and I want the lights to really come out. And I want to get more colorful too. It's always an expression. It's always a creation. My, as I said before, my Blue Ridge paintings, even though I am working from what I see, it's always my creation. It's always my decision about every color and every texture, whether I'm seeing it or not. I'm just about finished with a wildflower painting from Wildwood Park in Radford. Great place to go right now. Of course, we want to keep our distance. And I'm thinking after that I want to do a large wildflower. I really get into wildflowers. And mainly because I like just to have such colorful, colorful paintings that are always changing. That everywhere you look, different color, different texture. And this is a real good start for this. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll try to do a little more right now. I've only, I think I've only been going for like 10 minutes. So I might do just a little bit more. might leave it this way. As I said, I never know about these. I want them to be very experimental. I have an idea about what I want to do, but I never, ever have a definite idea. Now, in the wildflower planting I'm doing, I really am reproducing some wildflowers from Wildwood Park with my own expression, but yeah, they are, you can recognize those wildflowers. With these, I just like to really, really play around. It's a real fun thing to do, real creative thing to do. Now, I don't know, I might take a smaller brush and pull around with it a little bit more. I'm not going to quit. I really like what happened, which I wasn't planning on was this kind of bright area right through here. And I'm probably going to go back into the water and really repeat that below. But I think I'm just going to do a little more up here. I just not have a very long video this time. Yeah, see, that's probably what I'm going to be doing in the next layer. It's getting more complicated. And just still getting the light effect but getting, getting more complicated, getting uh, more change in the color. But basically, not that different from what you're seeing, because I really like the effect I got. I'm real, real amazed that I was able to get that much of a night effect that quickly without building up the layers of the paint. Now, you know, I can always use black, but uh, I just, like a lot of artists, don't like to use black. If I'm going to do something dark, it's going to be dark purple, dark red, combination therein. We just, uh, not real much for using black. Nothing wrong with it. Renoir called it the queen of colors. But it's not for me. I really prefer what we call a coloristic palette, which avoids, avoids black. And you just use the colors of the spectrum of light for everything in different amounts, different ways. Okay, that's where the lights are going to be, so I'm going to kind of make that a little stronger. There's a bridge right here. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow, and then I'm going to stop it and then make decisions. I never, I always put these up on Monday, 
and usually either today or tomorrow, I would take a, a real close look at it and make a bunch of decisions. And that is the hard, that's the real hard part about art. If you painted, you'd understand that because sometimes you get some things that are really nice and you decide to change them and then you thought, oh God, I wish I hadn't done that. And you can't really get it back a lot of the times. Because a lot of, oh, no, there's an example right there. Didn't want to do that. Got way too much paint there. It's um because of all the layers and all the way that paint mixes, you can't oftentimes get back something that you had. Luckily, I'm getting that back because it gets too complicated. Oh, I like that. Just putting a little, yeah, I'm probably going to do a little more on the insides of these buildings in the next layer. I don't know if I'll do some stars. I was thinking I might do that, but I don't know. Might just leave it as a one area. Now there's something bothering me about that red. It's gotten kind of muddy. So I'm going to work on that and then I think I'm going to just say enough's enough. Well, let's quit and then make some decisions. So thank you for watching. Be sure to click on the link in the description that will take you to the final painting and there are always links to my other artwork on Etsy, my website, and so forth.